So we've talked about addition and subtraction. Next, we're going to look at multiplication, then at division. So in front of you, you should have your packet. And you can notice the patterns that are specified as you look at those three columns of numbers. So we're multiplying on the left, and we have the product, what it's equal to, on the right. So on the right, each of those numbers, it's decreasing by 5 each time. Okay, and on the left, the leftmost column, that number is decreasing by 1 each time. So, as I'm decreasing by a factor of 1, I'm really decreasing by a factor of 5, since I was multiplying by 5. So, to multiply a positive number and a negative number, we multiply their absolute values. So, just to figure it out what constant we're dealing with. Then the sign of the number is going to be what? Is it going to be positive or negative? Positive times a negative gives us a negative. Alright, so an example. 8 times negative 5. So it's going to be negative since I have a positive. It's unspoken. Positive and negative, we get negative 40. What about for B? Negative 1 third times 5 sevenths. So what part of the number 1 third does the negative go with? Does it matter? We can give it to the top or to the bottom, but just not to both, because then it will become positive. So I'm going to sign it up to the top. I'm going to say this is negative 1 times 5, multiplying straight across the top, straight across the bottom. So we have negative 5 over 21. And we always want to ask, can I simplify that at all? Can't break it down any farther. All right, so the next patterns. Now I'm multiplying by negative 5 in each of those cases. So the same pattern on the left, the number is decreasing by 1. But what happens on the right? In that case, the number is increasing by 5 each time. So multiplying two negatives together, if you look at kind of the bottom of that chart, multiplying two negatives, we multiply their absolute values, and the product is... Positive. Negative times a negative is a positive. Alright, so again, just to kind of sum it up, have it all in one nice place. To multiply two non-zero real numbers, we multiply their absolute values. And then we determine the sign. So if the signs are the same, if I have positive times a positive, what am I going to get out? Positive. If I have a negative times a negative, i.e. the signs are the same, we get out positive. And if the signs are opposite, so if I have a plus and a minus, I'll get out a negative, or a minus and a plus, I'll get out a negative. So we have absolute values, positive for the first one, because we saw those two cases, and negative for the second, because again, we saw those two cases. The product of any real number and zero is what? Zero times anything is always zero. It's going to come out that nice. So, again, little summary for any real number A. doesn't matter what it is, positive or negative. Zero times anything, zero. It's going to be gone. So, try those four examples. Multiply them together, see what you get. So, hopefully you got a kick out of C. But let's go through the beginning. What did you get for A? We had a negative times a negative, so it's going to give us a positive 27. What about for B? Negative times a positive, so our answer should be negative. 16, 16 is 32. What about for C? That gigantic number, I don't even know the place values and how to pronounce it, but that big thing times 0 is going to be 0. It doesn't matter what it is or how huge it is. And what about for D? I have a negative times a negative, so those are going to be gone. We're going to get a positive. Up in the top, we've got 5 times 1, which is just 5. In the denominator, 6 times 9, 54. All right. So, thinking back to the order of operations, and please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, does the order of multiplication matter? No, not necessarily, but generally, what do we do? So we just follow an order. Generally, we go left to right. Mm, move left to right. Marker 
is squeaking. Can you hear it? <laughs> so let's work on a few of these. Again, the order doesn't necessarily matter, but if we just stick going from left to right, no one will get lost. All right, so please excuse my dear and Sally, what has to happen first in part A? We have parentheses, which is indicating multiplication in this case. So we can compute that first if we want. So if I do these together, I've got negative 8 times what? Negative 6. Negative times a negative will give us a positive. 6 times 8 is 48. All right. Let's do it in the other order, just to show you that it doesn't matter. We'll still get the same thing out. The parentheses, in this case, again, are just um, representing multiplication. So we don't necessarily have to compute them first, but hey, if you're comfortable with that, go with it. So if I do these two first, negative 8 times 2 will give me negative 16 times negative 3. Negative times negative will give me a positive, and 16 times 3 is 48. So again, order doesn't really matter, but generally we stick going from left to right. But sometimes it's easier to compute if you go in a different order from left to right. My brain really likes part A rather than part B because it'll take me a minute to compute that. Or I might have to do it off on the margin, but I know that one. I've got that one down. So looking at C, sometimes it's easier. I'm going to jump up here. Sometimes it's easier to take it in parts instead of going right straight across, left to right. So I'm going to evaluate these two together and these two together, and then I'll multiply them. So 8 times a negative 1 half is going to be negative. 8 divided by 2 gives me 4. And what happens here? We can do the division or the multiplication first, since multiplication and division, they come in the same order. So I like to compute what is negative 6 divided by 3. So that gives me a negative 2. So negative 2 times negative 2 will give me what? Positive 4. Or you could say negative 6 times negative 2 gives me a positive 12. Positive 12 divided by 3 gives me 4. Whichever one you're more comfortable with. So in the end, what do we got? Negative 16. And for part D. Negative 3, negative 5, negative 2, negative 3, negative 6. I'm going to take it from left to right. So, negative times negative will give me a positive 15. And I can't forget what I have left. 15 times a negative 2 will give me negative 30. Negative 30 times negative 3 will give you positive 90. Na uh, negative 6 times positive 90, so 9 times 6 will give me 54, and I have a factor of 0, so negative 540. So on the next page, we have a little summary of what's gone on in these last few examples. So let's take a peek. The product of an even number of negative numbers. So, an even number, like two of them, four of them, six of them. What does it end up being? So, let's find where we had an even number of negatives. So, I had two negatives in that first example, an even number, and the result was positive. Is that our only example? That's our only example. So, even number, we get out a positive number product of an odd number of negatives. So in this part C, I had one, two, three of them, and our answer was negative. In part D, I had one, two, three, four, five of them, which is odd, and our answer again was negative. So it's really helpful to know that pattern. If I have an odd number of them, it's going to be negative. If I have an even number of negatives, it's going to be positive. Sometimes it makes it faster to evaluate. So take those three examples. Try. Multiply them together. Simplify if you can. So what did you get out of part A? I've got a positive times a negative. So an odd number of negatives. One is odd. So we get out negative 30. 
Mm-hmm. What about if I have a negative times a negative? I'm going to get it all to positive. 30, an even number, an odd number. And what about for part C? Multiplying straight across the top, straight across the bottom. Again, we can assign that negative on four-fifths to either the top or to the bottom. I'm going to give it to the top. So I'm looking at negative 40 over 15. Can we simplify that down at all? Is there anything in common between 40 and 15? And I can take out of both of them. Factor of 5. So we're looking at negative 8 over 3. Simplified. Awesome. So let's do some evaluations. Evaluate 3x squared when x is 2 and x is negative 2. So wherever we see an x in an expression or an equation and we're trying to evaluate at a specific point, wherever you see an x, put parentheses around it so you don't make the mistake of, of a negative. Okay. So let's see. If I plug in 2, what's going to happen? I've got 3 times 2 squared. So please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, the exponents have to happen first. So 2 squared gives me 4, so I'm looking at 3 times 4, which is 12. And what comes out of if I plug in a negative? So I'm looking at 3, again we have to group where the x is, because it's that quantity squared. So negative 2 squared. So a negative 2 times a negative 2 gives you out a positive 4. So in both cases, we still got out the same answer. Okay. So looking at that next one, next example, I'll jump up here. We're evaluating negative x quantity squared and negative x squared when x is 5. So we want to see, do these parentheses matter? And we'll see. So, again, wherever I see an x, I'm going to put some parentheses in just to be careful. And negative x squared. Okay, so when I plug in 5, what do I get out in this case? Looking at negative 5 squared. Okay, you still, you still have the parentheses, but uh, again, 5 times a negative is going to give us negative 5 squared. So what comes out of there? Negative 5 times a negative 5 will give us positive 25. And what do we get in this case? So I have negative 5 squared. So what has to happen first? Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Exponents. 5 squared gives me 25. And I'm looking for its opposite. So, what does that tell us? Do parentheses matter? Mm -hmm. Parentheses, I can spell parenthesis matter. Big time. So, take those two tries, evaluate each of them for the different values of x, and then evaluate, again, the second one when a is equal to negative 4. All right, so first example, when I plug in 3, I'm looking at 2 times 3 squared. So 2 times the quantity 3 squared will be 9. We get out 18. And for the second part, when x is negative 3, what do we get? 2 times negative 3 squared. 2 times what quantity comes out of here? Positive 9, we get the same answer. But again, parentheses do matter, as we will notice in the second part. So a is negative 4. So I'm looking at a being negative 4, that thing squared. So how's that simplified? I need to work on the inside of the parentheses first before I do the exponent. So I have negative of a negative. That's going to give me positive 4 squared, which is 16. And into the second case, negative negative 4 squared. So what has to happen first there? Exponents. We don't have any simplifying on the inside of the parentheses to do. So I'm looking at negative 16. So yeah, parentheses do make a difference. Alright, few application problems, then we're done with this section.